So we've shown you the rods, we've shown you the rails, we've gone through all sorts of items of tackle, but the most important thing when going fishing is to have good bait. If your bait isn't very good, don't expect to catch anything. You may accidentally, um, but having good prime bait is basically what catches you your fish when you go fishing. Now Alan, these, these are baits that anybody can go into the local tackle shop, speak to the tackle dealer and buy it over the counter. Very yep. easily accessible. You don't have to go out of your way to get them. You can order them from the tackle shop. Alan, what is the best way to use these? You know, how would you mount these to a hook? Well, as you said, we've got, got all the local, all the baits. These are local to this area. So we've got some nice Dungeness Blacks. We've got some, uh, these yellow tails come from Sandwich Bay, nearby up the road. The ragworm maybe come from Portsmouth. We can't get them here. Um, it's important really to have the right bait for the right species at the right time and the right venue. And you, I mean, a lot of people have got different opinions on that. You can catch fish accidentally on the wrong bait sometimes. That's fishing. But generally, if you, if you go for the bait that is, is the best on a venue, you're more likely to catch something. Now, in the winter, we tend to use a lot more lugworm and squid. In the summer, it's crab and fish baits and ragworm. That's Kent. Other areas of the country are different, right? Uh, I'll start with a, with a big bait. Now, generally accepted as one of the best baits for big fish is a whole calamari squid. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Apart from the dogfish, which occasionally go for it, that really goes for a big fish. The trouble with it is it's difficult to mount on a single hook. So you want a panel rig. That's two hooks. I'll show you how to do it. We go through the top, bring the hook out, take it around and then through the head. Just need to wrap it around once, yeah? Yep, just wrap it around once. Now as you can see, the hook is then in the head. Now this top hook, this is the, the secret of the whole thing, is sliding. So what you do is take that down to the end of the squid, wrap it around the line and then just pierce it through the top. Now what it does, it has the effect, it holds the squid in position. Without the second hook, the squid will just bundle down onto the big hook, make a big ball. Any fish taking it is likely to miss the hook. With Present, this... Presentation is really, really yeah. important with squid. I mean, whatever end the fish takes that squid, it's going to get a hook. There's a hook there. Right. Three O's in that case. You need at least three O's for a squid bait, but we are after big fish. Right. Smaller baits, the worms, as I say, you need a smaller hook. Perhaps you've got a one here. Now, I prefer lugworms, always have done, to mount them from the tail first. Now, I don't know what you do, but I've always felt that the sand was in that end, so I nip off the sand and I thread them on that way, simply because all the juices are in, then end up where the point of the hook is. I do the same, Alan. I put lugworms on tail first, but I've, I've always thought, I mean, it's just my theory anyway, that the bristles on a lugworm go one way. Yeah. And if the fish goes for the head first, then the bristles are going the opposite way. And sometimes, if it's the opposite way around, the, the worm will slide down the fish's throat easier. Easy. That's just my theory. Well, that's one another idea, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's what we've all got our own personal opinions on it. But, but one of the problems most anglers have is not being able to thread, especially novices, thread a worm on like I just did. I do it second nature, you know, it's easy, I've been doing it all my life. So this is where a baiting needle comes in very, very handy. Now, they come in a different variety of sizes. The smaller, narrow ones with a point are for ragworm, and the bigger, blunter ones are for lugworm. Now all we do, we do the same, but this is far easier. Stick it through the middle of the lugworm, and as you can see, it's quite easy to put it on there. And then we get the point of the hook, and in the end of the needle there's a little hole. Stick the hook in the hole, pull the line tight, and away you go. How easy is that? That is so right. easy, Alan. So Very quick as well, isn't it? And the seat, that is important. I'll take that off again. I'll show you for why. If you, if you have trouble baiting a worm, and you bait it like this, which is what a lot of novices do, Along comes Mr. Fish. Misses the hook. That's right, you can get the bait off. If the 
hooks right through the middle of the worm, he's, he's got to get the hook. Now with a lugworm, let's put it back on there again, show you how easy it is once you get proficient at it. Now it's, it's quite um, common practice to fish what we call a cocktail or to tip off a lugworm. Now I'm going to use a bit of squid here. Or you could tip off with a, or a, rag a rag worm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, cut, I'll cut a little flag of squid. Don't need a big lump. We're talking, this is general fishing for dabs, whiting, pouting, coddling, the sort of general of the meal fish. Now that, that is quite an attractive bait. If I had to say, I think that's probably the most successful bait in the UK. Do you think in, in the, the winter? In the UK without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Lug tip squid. You can use a bit of fish. I mean, we've got a bluey here. They've only been used, what, for five years? Yeah, about the last country? five years, the and Pacific salary. That's right, they've proved really effective in the summer and springtime for thornback rays. Very oily, and they, they give off a big, big, big century. Of course, the old mackerel is always a favourite. What, what a knife, I'll just fill it in knife here. You can cut a... One tip there, Al, when you're cutting the fish up for a bit, always cut away from you. That's it. Never towards you. That's it, you can tip off with a bit of mackerel like that. Or you can cut a, a slice. Got another hook here somewhere. Got a lug worm on it. Again, fairly easy. This is quite a small compact bait. This is a good bait for summer fishing. I suppose you're dogfish, really. Dogfish, yeah. It's a dogfish bait, and yeah. it, matchmen use that that kind of bait. As you can see, there's a nice lot of juice and oil coming out of, that, out of that. Incidentally, this hook. Remember when we was in the tackle, we described the um, bait stop. There's the, the rig that I made, the hook that I made. There's the stop. You can see the the worm put two on there, and a bit of fish or a bit of squid. Now that, that bait can't go up past that stop, so it's going to stay where the, where the uh, not is this one. This one hasn't got a stop on it. Ends up there. Along comes the white in or whatever you're fishing for. He grabs that and he misses, he misses the, hook. the hook. So that's the reason we use a bait stop. Um, I've got two types of lugworm here. This is the rat black, as we said. This is the common or blow lugworm, it's called. And the reason it's called that is because in the, in the heat, it bursts really goes off quick, don't they? It, they you know, do, yeah. They really do. They don't make heat. But they are common and they're easy to get hold of. So all these baits are really readily available in your local tackle shop, but if you want to be sure of a supply, you know, it's always best to make a phone call, isn't it? Order your bait. Yeah, I mean, when you get into angling after you've been doing it for a bit, um, lots of anglers take up bait digging as a part of the hobby, and it, it really is. I mean, I've bait, dug bait, pump worms, and collecting crabs all my life. And I've always thought it was the fit part of yeah. sea fishing. People tend to say angling is a bit, little bit of a, a lazy man on one end and a worm on the other, and it's just not true. It's very physical uh, sea angling, and bait digging is, is a great way to keep fit, and you learn about the marine environment, which you're, is you're, really handy. And if you, if you collect your own bit, it's not only are you saving money, but you've always got a steady supply in the fridge. If the conditions are right, I want to go fishing, it's there, ready yep, for you. Yep, you've got the best you can have. Yeah. And that's, that's the key. You, you collect what you want to get. Um, and providing you, you've got the time, um, it's the way to go. No if you want to see a variation of beer talent, I suggest you take along a walk along a venue where there's a match going on, some matchmen, and have a look in their beer bucket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, there's a lot of baits that you can't buy, like white ragworm, peeler crab to an extent. You, you've got to go out. You just, if you want them, harbour ragworm, you've got to yeah. go and get them yourself. You've got to get them yourself. You know, it's a difficult. Yeah. But anyway, that, that's an important part of angling, there's no doubt about it. A good bait supply will catch you fish, there's no doubt.